Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project, Magnetic Reversal News, Sacred Geography, Shinrin Yoku, and Yurt Life, bringing you a grand solar minimum. Update Monday, November 6th, 8.30 p.m. Mountain Time, 2023. The geomagnetic storm, now continuing for the second day, has dropped down. We're at KP 4.5. The aurora will be less spectacular tonight, albeit there still will be aurora. And we're keeping a close eye here on Iceland at the area of uplift as we are waiting for the imminent eruption. Keep calm. It's boom time. Northern California forecast is getting spicy. Sacramento could see rain as Sierras could see snow. And as far as the Sierra snow, storms temporarily close. Sonora, Tioga, and Ebbets passes. Holy macaroni. The snow is coming in. And take a look. North Carolina fires are raging with warmer air incoming and people, well, are taking heed. Two wildfires are burning in North Carolina due to dry conditions with above average temperatures in the forecast. The Poplar Dry Fire and the Colette Ridge Fire have collectively burned over two and a half square miles in western North Carolina. In Henderson County, at least two homes have been lost and at least one other damaged by the blaze. Emergency officials evacuated more than 30 structures there. At the larger of the two fires in Cherokee County, firefighters have dispatched a number of resources, including two helicopters and an air attack platform. Though that fire remained 0% contained and was growing due to drought conditions, officials said most of it is burning in remote backcountry areas. A burn ban was issued and burn permits canceled for 14 North Carolina counties. Parts of North Carolina are forecast to see above average temperatures, which could worsen fire conditions in the state. The good news is that there are several patterns on the GFS model showing at least some moisture coming here into North Carolina, specifically here on November 10th, 11th, uh, which is good news. And then a major system here lining up for the end of November, uh, potentially a nor'easter. And so we do have moisture coming to that region to alleviate the situation, hopefully. Heavy rainfall in the Pacific Northwest. Critical fire weather concerns in Hawaii and across the Southwest. A wet pattern will continue across the Pacific Northwest through Tuesday, where locally heavy rainfall is expected. Critical fire weather patterns continue this evening over the leeward areas of most of the Hawaiian Islands. And another batch of fire weather concerns will be possible across eastern New Mexico and parts of the Texas Panhandle Tuesday. So please don't flick your cigarette butts in the areas with the pink. Now let's take a look at the total accumulated snowfall to make Al Gore happy. Shut up, Al! Get in your hole! He is net getting no bunt cake tonight. We're going to move it through here. Heavy snow pattern for the high elevations of the West. Through the next several days, it's just going to be increased accumulation for most of the Rockies uh, as a major system moves through the east and affects the northeast starting Wednesday, Thursday. Take a look at that. We're going to be seeing some significant totals for much of New York State, all of Massachusetts, New Hampshire, Vermont, as well as Maine. It's insane. So get out your snowshoes. It's coming and no one's bumming. China sees unexpected snowfall causing flight cancellations, school closures, and more. Al Gore's abor. Seismic update. No quakes of note. We've got some activity on the mid-ocean ridges. The ocean may be swelling, as well as activity in Hawaii. Could be heating up there at Kilauea. But overall, it's looking like a 5.3 aftershock in Nepal. Bad news there. And that brings us to the Reykjanes Peninsula, where the seismic swarm has lost a lot of steam over the last 36 hours, but that doesn't mean the eruption is over. It hasn't even started yet. Our uplift now is at 7 centimeters in 10 days at the GNSS station at Mount Purban. 
and around 1,300 earthquakes in the area in just the last 24 hours. These are small earthquakes, but the uplift is indicative of more magma being in place, and it's just a matter of time before that reaches the surface, and it will probably reach the surface here just west of the lagoon here in the power station over here in the area of the blackness where we have live streams that we will link you below where you can, well, maybe monitor the area for the initial eruption, which should be happening anytime soon. And the geomagnetic storm that has been pummeling us for now for 36 hours was seen as far south as Texas, the nexus of the Schmexus, and even Arizona. Well, it's been an active period for space weather, and that means auroras, a.k.a. the northern lights. Take a look at some of these spectacular scenes. You've got these curtains of green, red, and purple colors just filling up the night sky. Now, the strength of a storm impacts how far equatorward these spectacular flashes can be seen. In this case, as far down as New York, Iowa, or Wyoming here in the U.S., as well as parts of Northern Europe. Now, take a look at this. Even satellites caught a glimpse of the action. So auroras form when particles blasted out from the sun enter the Earth's atmosphere at the north and south poles. Those particles then interact with gases in the Earth's atmosphere, generating a glow. Now, the recent widely spotted auroras were caused by a strong geomagnetic storm. Solar activity settled down following this outbreak, meaning the aurora were fewer and farther between in the days that followed. And here we can see uh, real-time solar wind that geomagnetic storm continuing as the plasma, the solar wind speed, still sticks well above 600 kilometers per second, according to this graphic. And look at the phi angle, still shifting rapidly. The BZ is tightening up, which is good news. So all will be quieting down on the geomagnetic field shortly. But we are still in geomagnetic storm, G1 minor, KP 4.5, the overall picture is pretty hot, but you can see College Station here, KP3. It's cooling down. And you can see the glow here on the Aurora forecast is much reduced, well, since the other evening. Good news. Now, there is some uh, new paper coming out here which directly connects the solar cycle, yeah, the sun, with increasing impact of the off-season super typhoons since the 1990s. And this is very interesting information here. Solar cycle in red here every 11 years or so. And you can see those super typhoons correlating quite dramatically with the solar cycle. What does that mean? It means that, well, probably the IPCC is far off. And when they say that CO2 is the driver of climate, it just might be the sun. All the links will be below, especially to this new paper coming out. And here, another article coming out today. Rocks from Mars are hitting Earth, and something is odd about their age. Well, they're much younger than they thought. And here is what's fascinating. Did you know that there are around 360 or so meteorite samples found on Earth that have been identified as having a Martian origin? Holy macaroni. Some three of, 302 of these at the time of writing are classified as shedogite. That must be a Martian rock. In fact, it's a type of metal-rich Mars rock forged in the heat of volcanic activity. And most of these are younger than 200 million years old, which means that Earth has been in close proximity to Mars where major cosmic impacts have occurred and pieces of the surface of Mars are now on Earth, hundreds of them. The FDA to finally outlaw soda ingredient banned around the world, and this is brominated vegetable oil, which kills you. Yeah, it literally stops you from incorporating iodine into your body, which you need to survive it's absolutely disgusting. It's just one of hundreds of chemicals that should be banned in the U.S., but the FDA allows because the pharmaceutical industrial com uh, complex, along with big ag, are in a revolving door with the federal government, and they own you. They own us. 
the federal government and these agencies that are out there to so-called protect us are doing none of that. Trust me. Temples at Bonchuklu Tarla are older than Gobegli Tepe and rewrite ancient history. Well, we've been rewriting ancient history for a decade now, and there are 12 unique sites in Anatolia that are all from around the Younger Dryas and Mora being discovered and unearthed. The history of humanity is far from being known. In fact, we don't know anything about our ancient history. 12,000 years ago, there were very advanced civilizations that were not hunter-gatherers and were just getting to the bottom of it. So check out the article. More to come over at Magnetic Reversal News on the new findings. And do we even know about recent history? Have you heard of the Great Leap Forward? Yeah, well, it happened in Chinese communist China where, well, similar to the Green New Deal, they were reworking the way their society exists. And it resulted in 15 to 50 million people dying because they eliminated farming, because it was bad for the environment. No, I mean, that's what they're doing now. So it could only be worse, couldn't it? You want to know more dystopian censorship and gobbledygook that you're living in, check out our Rumble channel where we published an exclusive first look at the Nashville Shooters Manifesto. Yeah, these mass shooters are trying to kill white people. Who knew? Now you do. And that's a boom to knowledge. Please share this video as we are shadow banned and we need your help to grow. Become a Patreon. Support the work we do. We love you. Be safe. And Lee and I are be heading out to Chaco Canyon in just a day or so. Stay tuned for updates. Mm.